Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about paying interest from your company to an individual. Let's sit down and have a chat. So today we're going to be talking about what happens when you receive money from an angel investor or from a private individual and how that affects the company and what you need to do with that money in your company. The first question that I tend to get asked on this is, well, how do I treat that money in the company? And I would typically say, think about it as if it's any other type of loan. It's just money coming into your business that you're going to have to repay to someone at some future date. It may be a short loan of three to six months. It may be a longer term loan, three to five years, or an ongoing sort of item. So it just will show as an item on your balance sheet as any other bank loan or bridging finance or anything like this would show normally. The one thing I would say is that you need to make sure that you have a loan agreement in place. So ensure you use a solicitor or if you've already been doing some for a while, ensure that you've got the appropriate paperwork in place, especially if it's with family and friends. This is really just to make sure that everything is done properly and if there is any difficulties at some point in the future, you've got the paperwork to fall back onto and everything can be done legitimately and properly, especially with family and if something happens to that family member. In your loan agreement, you'll sort out what sort of interest rate you're going to be paying that individual and when you're going to be paying them. These are quite crucial bits of information and this will determine when and how the tax implications will follow through. So make sure you define these points and from there we can move on to how we need to deal with this. Now that leads us to the question, what is a CT61? Now this is the important form. This is the one that you probably hear many people talk about, but you might not necessarily know exactly what it is. The CT61 form is where you declare to HM Revenue Customs what interest you have paid out to private individuals. So it's basically the form that you're going to tell them how much tax you have deducted from that individual for tax purposes that you're going to pay over to HM Revenue and Customs on their behalf. Now this leads me to the question of, well, what do you actually need to deduct? Because I don't know what their tax position is. Well, that's not a problem. The only thing that you need to deduct as the company is a 20% deduction on the amount that they're going to be getting. So let's use some simple maths here. I need to pay them 1200 interest at this particular point in time. So if I'm going to deduct 20%, I'm going to be taking 200 pounds off that 1200. Editing Kimberly here. Obviously not so simple maths. I didn't have my calculator with me that day. So check out the numbers on screen to follow the maths. And that 1200 now is a thousand pounds that I need to pay to my investor and 200 pounds that I'm going to be paying to HM Revenue and Customs. So you're going to be paying the net figure to your investor and you will let them know what the gross is. So you will let them know that they have received interest of 1200. You have deducted 20%, 200, and they have received 80%, which is the thousand. Now let's just cover what they will need to do with that. So you've got an awareness. Now on their personal tax return, they will need to declare that they've received £1,200 interest. And again, check out the numbers on the screen. Had £200 deducted of tax and that they had a net of a 1000 Now, depending on what your taxpayer's position is, they may have paid the right amount of tax. So for them, there's no tax implications. All the tax has been dealt with, nothing else to do. It may be that they don't pay an awful lot of tax and they paid too much tax. So not a problem, nothing to do with you as the company, but as an individual, what they will do is claim some of that tax that you have paid on their behalf back from the tax man. Now, if they're a higher rate taxpayer and they've not paid enough tax, 
then this will just get added on to their tax bill with everything else they may have earned during that tax year and they'll pay a little extra tax at the appropriate time for them. Now all of that is nothing to do with you but just so you understand how it all fits together. So let's get back to the company and what you need to do after you've deducted that amount. Now the CT61 tax regime works on a calendar quarterly basis, which means each calendar quarter, March, June, September and December, you need to do a report, a return, the CT61 return, to HM Revenue and Customs and tell them how much interest you have paid to private individuals, how much you have deducted in total, and then that deduction is what you will pay over to them. Now, you need to do this return each calendar quarter, but you only need to do it if you've actually paid some interest. So if you're paying an annual interest amount, you won't need to do a return every quarter, you'll only need to do a return in the quarter that you've actually made the payment. So that might reduce your paperwork down a little bit. Now the return is due within 14 days of the end of the calendar quarter and the payment is also due 14 days after the calendar quarter. So if we think about March, the return will be due by the 14th of April and then the payment will also be due by the 14th of April and the same will apply after the end of each quarter the following month. So in our example of deducting £200 from our investor, that £200 will be reported on our CT61 form and the £200 is what the company will pay directly to HM Revenue and Customs. Now in terms of what the company will show in the company records, it will just show that £1200 has been paid interest to a private investor. It won't show that 200 has gone to HM Revenue and Customs, it won't show just the 1000 it will show the total amount that has been paid as interest to your investor. And that's because the tax implication doesn't really matter from the company's point of view, that's just a tax requirement. In essence, the expense the company has incurred is just the 1200 which was the interest that you were paying to your private investor. In terms of the options available for paying your investors from your company, please do speak to your accountant or tax advisor. They'll be able to discuss with you what the right option is for you and how to make it work for you and your business. A final point to mention is the CT61 forms aren't available online. You will have to order these to be able to fill them in. So as soon as you know that you've got interest being paid out to an investor, please do fill in the online form at HM Revenue and Customs because that is what you will need to fill in that's what you will need to report and then they will send you something in the post. At the present moment in time, there are no penalties for late submission of these forms. However, if you can be on time and make sure everything is up to date, then it just puts you in a better tax position with HM Revenue and Customs and keeps you on the right side of the tax man. The link for requesting one of those forms is in the description below. So please do have a look down there and you can get a link to get to the right place and request one of the forms. Today, hopefully you've discovered what it means paying interest from your company and how it affects your investors and you in the company. If you do have any further questions, please do let us know in the comments below. Please click like on this video and please subscribe to the channel to find out more about property tax and accountancy related topics. Let's make tax less taxing.